question for Mr. Webster. Yes. <laughs> you are the woman of many hats today. Oh, apparently. <laughs> Actually, for a female, probably many <laughs> shoes. Yes. Mr. Cofield, do you have the agreement? And I the have the agreement plea? and the plea. Okay. You want to give those to me? Um, yes, sir. I, I need to read the DUI account because he's entering um, drug court for count one. And yeah, and I understand. For count two. That's fine. I understand. It was already explained to me before, too. Okay, perfect. All right. Please state your full name for the record. Barry Joseph Cofield, Jr. And Mr. Cofield, how far did you go in school? Uh, through undergrad. So you read, write, and understand the English language? Yes. You had the opportunity to go over this plea agreement, talk to your attorney about it, and ask him, now her, questions? Yes. And you understood it, which is indicated by your signature on this last, sorry, the second page? Yes. And you're entering a plea of no contest in case number 2018-2080-CFA for the charges of possession of heroin and DUI causing damage or injury. Is that right? Yes. And you realize that the possession of heroin carries a maximum sentence of five years and a $5,000 fine, and the DUI causing injury carries a maximum sentence of one year and a $1,000 fine for a total of six years and $6,000. Yes. And you still wish to enter this plea here today? Yes. You realize you're giving up certain rights by entering this plea? Yes. You're giving up the right to a jury trial to have the state prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, your right to remain silent, your right to cross-examine the state's witnesses, and your right to appeal any verdict that a jury could enter against you within 30 days. Do you understand that? Yes. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened or coerced you in any way into entering this plea? No. Have you been under the influence of any alcohol or drugs in the last 24 hours? No. Have you taken any medications in the last 12 hours? No. Are you suffering from any mental illness? No. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes. Are you entering this plea because you believe it's in your best interest at this time? Yes. It may or may not apply to your case, but I must inform you, if you are not a citizen of the United States, you could be subjecting yourself to deportation by entering this plea. Do you understand? Yes. And it may or may not apply to your case, but according to the Jimmy Rice Act, if you've previously been convicted of a sexually violent offense or a sexually motivated offense, you could be subjecting yourself to involuntary commitment by entering this plea. Do you understand? Yes. And if you were adjudicated guilty on the possession of heroin charge, you'd be subjecting yourself to a one-year driver's license suspension. Do you understand that? Yes. Any DNA evidence, state or defense, that would exonerate the defendant? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Could I have a factual basis, please? Yes, Your Honor. As to count one, the state would prove through true and competent testimony that Barry Joseph Cofield was in Cinnamon County on July 3rd, year 2018. At that time, he was in actual constructive possession of a controlled substance, that substance being heroin, and I believe the defense will stipulate to the DUI. We would, Your Honor. All right. You realize that's what the state is saying they would show if this case were to go to a jury trial? Yes. I find that you are an alert and intelligent individual capable of exercising your best judgment, that you're entering this plea freely and voluntarily after having conferred with competent counsel with whom you're satisfied, and that there is a factual basis for your plea, which I'm accepting at this time. All right. As to the DUI, any legal reason why I shouldn't uh, go to sentencing? No, Your Honor. All right. As to case number 2018-2080-CFA, the state of Florida versus Barry Joseph Cofield. First of all, as to count one, I am signing the Seminole County Drug Court Diversion Order, which removes count one from the docket of which it's at to my drug court docket. Once you complete drug court, count one will be null prost or dismissed. Otherwise, if you do not, then your case will go back for sentencing uh, with me. Otherwise, as to count two, the DUI causing damage or injury, this court would adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 12 months supervised probation, which will run concurrent with your per, uh, drug court probation. You were to have a $500 fine, 50 hours community service, which shall be completed at a rate minimum rate of five hours per month. You were to have DUI counterattack school, level one, and any recommended treatment, victims awareness uh, panel, six months driver's license suspension mandated by statute, 10 day vehicle impoundment, random drug testing at your expense, which also can coincide if need be uh, with drug court as well, cost of prosecution, uh, cost of investigation, which are imposed as part of the drug court pro um, contract and will uh, be merged with drug court. And otherwise, this count will not be um, dismissed at drug after drug court is done. You will otherwise have this sentence and have to complete this sentence even after you complete drug court. You have 30 days to appeal your sentence. If you can't afford an attorney for the purposes of appeal, one will be appointed to you. Uh, and Ms. Harper, you will supervise him on this? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You so this is and I'll have him in drug court, so I'll supervise him. Okay. 
So at this point, when you're, uh, the court will indicate when you report for your drug court probation, you'll be reporting for your DUI probation as well. And Judge, Mr. Webster wanted me to mention that there, uh, the restitution in the case has been paid. I don't know if it was on the plea form. It's not on the plea form, so the restitution was removed evidently by the okay. state. He just wanted to make sure that that was yes, right that's, that it was paid. That was, uh, so Ms. Pierce already yes. took care of that. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so if you could go over to the court deputies and get your paperwork. Judge, I believe that's all I have. Good to see you. It's good to see you. You need to have everybody pay you for your time today. I should. <laughs> or I have some other work they could be doing for me. Yeah, exactly. All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Supreme Court of Florida is now in session. All who have cause to plead, draw near, give attention, you shall be heard. God save these United States, great state of Florida, and this honorable court. Ladies and gentlemen, Supreme Court of Florida, please be seated. Uh, and welcome to the Florida Supreme Court. We're with Judge uh, Rex Heiler. Would you please step up to the podium? Judge Rex Heiler, you are here before the court today because of ethical misconduct in your official role as a judge. I must begin by saying how sad a day this is for you, for us, and for the entire judicial system. At the most fundamental level, you have damaged the public's trust and confidence in our state courts. This is a very serious matter and one that the court takes very seriously. The effectiveness of our, judicial, of our judiciary in our democratic form of government ultimately rests on the trust and confidence that people confer upon judges like you. Though none of us can undo what you have done, we have commanded you to appear today for a public reprimand that is being broadcast throughout the state. It is one way we can assure the public that we take ethical misconduct by a judge very seriously and that we will not hesitate to punish errant judges in a, pub in a most public way. Judge Reichseidler, this court, in its opinion, has accepted a stipulation that you entered with the State Judicial Qualifications Commission about the misconduct you have exhibited. You have agreed to, and we have accepted, this stipulation as one that best serves the interest of justice and of sound judicial administration. The misconduct in this instance arose when you were being interviewed by the First District Court of Appeal Judicial Nominating Commission. Early in those interviews, the Judicial Nominating Commission questioned you about your driving record. Later, on March 17, 2014, you made an opening statement saying that you take the Judicial Nominating Commission's concerns about your driving record very seriously. However, at no time, during or after, your interview, did you inform the Judicial Nominating Commission that you had received a speeding ticket that same morning that caused you to be arrived late to the meeting? The Judicial Qualifications Commission concluded, and you have agreed, that the incompleteness of your statement on that occasion constituted an ethical violation. On September 18, 2014, you had another interview before the Judicial Nominating Commission, during which the subject of your driving record arose again. Once again, you avoided any mention of the March 17, 2014 traffic citation you had received, even though you later acknowledged you should have mentioned it to avoid confusion and to ensure that the Judicial Nominating Commission was aware you were not trying to avoid the issue. The Judicial Qualifications Commission entered into a stipulation with you that your conduct had violated Canons 1, Canon 2A, Canon 4A sub 2, and Canon 4A sub 3. These canons require a judge at all times 
to act in a manner that upholds the integrity and independence of the judiciary, to avoid the appearance of impropriety, and to avoid engaging in any activity that means the judicial office. Candor in a judge is clearly critical. The Judicial Qualifications Commission determined here that your lack of candor may not have involved intentional falsehoods, but was certainly confusing and misleading. The Judicial Qualifications Commission further found that omitting important information requested by the Commission and later providing inaccurate information was inappropriate. Judge Rex Seidler, your conduct demonstrated a lack of candor not befitting the high standards of ethical conduct expected of all judges in this state. For these reasons, we hereby reprimand you for your ethical violations. Finally, Judge Rex Seidler, we encourage you to review the prior disciplinary cases that this court from time to time has been required to address. You will find a number that have involved a single breach of ethics during a judge's career with none that followed afterward. We hope that this also will be the case with you. You also will find a much smaller number of cases in which judges did not learn from their mistakes and committed yet another violation. We advise you to remember what our prior cases have consistently held. A second ethical breach by a judge will be viewed much more harshly. Your public reprimand is concluded and you may leave.